Good morning. Very, very welcome. Good morning to all of you on this Palm Sunday, those joining with us online, and all those gathered here at St. Andrew's United Church. Just uh, a couple of brief announcements this morning. The flowers in the sanctuary this morning are, uh, are placed in loving memory of Sam and Mabel Wyatt uh, by their family, as they are around this time every year. And so it is with joy that uh, we extend a welcome to a couple other Wyatts that are gathering with us this morning. So welcome from your drive from the Brooks Falls area on this beautiful Palm Sunday. There are a number of services this upcoming week during Holy Week. Uh, beginning with uh, Monday, Thursday services, there will be one taking place at Fairview United Church at 7 p.m. But if you want to get your Monday, Thursday on a little bit earlier, uh, sorry? Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. If you want to get your Monday, Thursday on? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, if, there will also be, oh, sorry, Fairview, 7 p.m., there will also be Monday, Thursday events at Harmony United Church and Sydenham Heritage, both beginning at 5.30 as well. Good Friday, uh, 10 a.m. service here at St. Andrew's United Church. There'll be an Easter sunrise service on Easter Sunday, 6.45 a.m., uh, taking place at Brant's Crossing. And of course, we'll, we'll be celebrating Easter Sunday and communion here 10 o'clock at St. Andrews. And also just a reminder that uh, the next uh, event of the four United Churches of Brantford uh, will be taking place here at St. Andrews United Church with a joint worship service on the 23rd of April. Uh, if I seem a little mumbled over my words this morning, um, I'm going to share with you right now that I'm just a little wee bit uh, tired. And uh, the reason for my weariness this morning uh, is actually a good reason, uh, because as of uh, last evening, uh, the final, final submission uh, for my doctorate was submitted to Wesley Theological <laughs> so, uh, That uh, endeavor has taken a lot of mental energy uh, this week. Uh, and uh, I couldn't sleep last night because my mind wouldn't stop thinking about it. So anyhow, here we are, uh, but it is Palm Sunday. We are gathered, which is the right thing to do, whether we come bright and bushy-tailed after a great sleep, waking up to the sun shining, or however we find ourselves. For we are gathered this morning, acknowledging that we reside in the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples. And it is in the spirit of reconciliation and working towards right relationships and the reality that is before us in how we live and work and share in this land of God's creation that God will always empower us and guide us along the way. And so let us worship God. of call to worship this morning. Open the gates. Give us courage to walk through. Lay down your cloaks. We mark the journey to the Lift up the branches. Let us boldly proclaim God's peace. I invite you to join in our opening hymn this morning, number 123 in Voices United. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, number 123. <laughs>
that we come together seeking God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit's presence within our midst. And so we open ourselves up in humble prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, this morning we have come to cheer you on. We can feel the excitement of the crowds who welcome Jesus with such joy. And we want to join in, to share in their hope, remembering your promise of a Savior. And so bless us as we greet the Messiah who arrives now. Yet, O oh God, as we stand at the gate, a little bit hesitant, often uncertain, we are reluctant to answer your invitation fully. We find ourselves slow to embark upon the journey towards your reign. And in doing so, we seek your forgiveness. And we ask that you grant us the help that we need to be and truly reflect your people of faith, to join in courage in the remarkable procession of faith that continues this day. May we selflessly lay our cloaks before you and lift the palms that we wave to your glory. And forever help us acknowledge that by your grace we are forgiven. And for that we offer our praise and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. So may the peace of Jesus Christ, whom we follow and join with on this celebratory day, be with you all. And also with you. And let us joyously share this greeting of peace with our neighbors this morning.
Well, this morning we do hear of a king riding on a donkey. And that image to us is somewhat ridiculous. For Jesus' life and death are but a story of paradox. Our God knows suffering and ridicule. And instead of vengeance, instead invites us to love. Commands us to share, implores us to seek justice and dignity for all. And through our gifts, through this community of faith, the United Church of Canada, through Mission and Service Fund, we are doing just that. Seeking to transform lives, inspire meaning, and build a better world. Let us share our offerings this day and those we recognize through power. Let us pray. O God of equality, your call to be countercultural has not changed. And so it was with Jesus atop a donkey, it is today. And so help us to start with ourselves, sharing our abundance and praying for a world where power is shared and not wielded. From time to time, we will wave palms or placards with your presence in our lives always a reminder. And so bless that which has been received today and at other times through par and online. And may these gifts be a part of your continued revolution. 
We offer this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, for this Palm Sunday, we jump back to the Revised Common Lectionary. I know the last four weeks we've danced around a little bit as I've shared with you uh, themes that were born out of, out of my research. Uh, themes dealing with moral authenticity, community, transcendence, and mystery, and our quest for meaning. Uh, but today we get back. We get back to our story as it is appropriate on Palm Sunday as we hear the account from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village, the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied there, a colt with her. Untie them. Bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. For this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. While the disciples went, indeed, as Jesus directed them, they brought the donkey and the colt, and they put cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him and, and following, and they were shouting, Hosanna, son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in highest heaven! Well, when they entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. And they were asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Herein is wisdom. Thanks, Thanks be to God. blessing. I had anticipated sitting uh, in my little home office finishing up all the citation and noting and the structure to formally send in uh, my thesis paper. Uh, but as it happened, uh, I ended up driving an incredible educator and individual who is, has an immense attention 
to perfection uh, up north for a family bridal shower. And uh, so as I was driving north, the farther we got north, it was a lovely afternoon and the weather started to change. And as there was more snow and more runoff, the farther we went north on that April 1st morning, I, I remembered back to very early Aprils growing up in, in Regina. Now, April in Regina could be midwinter, or it could be a lovely spring day. But one of the things that you have to know about uh, growing up throughout winters in Regina, they didn't plow residential streets. They plowed the main thoroughfares, and they would spread a little sand on it. But residential streets, even if your first snow that stayed happened before Halloween, and the last snow was probably still some weeks to come in April. Every snowfall was packed down on your residential street. And then you might get a little layer of sand on top of that. And the next snowfall, the cars would drive on it and it would pack it down again and pack it down again and pack it down again. Until the time you came in early April, you might have... 24 inches of solid concrete ice that you were driving on to get to your house. And it was absolutely remarkable once the temperature began to rise a little bit and you would begin to see these, these little cracks begin to develop close to where the storm drains were. And there would be a little trickle of water that would begin to flow towards that stream, or as a little stream towards that storm drain. And that, that marked a very short period of incredible excitement and anticipation and joy for young boys and girls. Because that meant that once those streams got a little bit bigger and began to erode the ice away, it was toothpick racing season. What joy it was to run home from school and connect with your friends and find out where the best little runoff stream was. And they weren't just straight little streams. There were bends, there were turns, there were little tunnels that were created under the ice as it all flowed. We would race and open up the drawers of our kitchen hoping that we would find Within the mess, do you have that kitchen drawer at home where everything that you don't really know where to put is stuffed in? I mean, some of us, well, just one, yes. Some of us have more. Uh, but I remember at our house, that it was the junk drawer. And, and inevitably, in the drunk, junk drawer, that's where you would find some toothpicks. And so you'd grab a handful of toothpicks and race out and join your friends. But that hard, foundational, concrete-like slab of ice on the road would last and last and last. I can only imagine, we can only imagine, what it would have been like traveling upon that road down from the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem that day. No, it probably was not covered with 24 inches of hard packed snow and ice. However, imagine the commitment, imagine the confidence, imagine the outlook that Jesus had built among his followers. The foundational belief that they had that this truly was the child of God, that this was the Messiah, that this was the person that was going to turn everything that they knew and struggled against upside down. For some of the followers of Jesus, it was absolutely a firm, rock-like foundation of their belief that Rome was going to be kicked out because the revolution was going to begin. That's what Judas had hoped for. For others, it was 
the foundational strength and the belief that the religious systems of inclusion and exclusion born out of the religious authorities and the temple were going to be forever altered and changed in such a way that opened up the ability and the necessary community to one where all were included. I mean, think of our own foundations of what we believe and what we hold so dear and true. Yes, some of our foundations have a lot in common with each other, yet at the same way, they differ in many different ways. I mean, even as I looked towards the research that I was doing, I asked the question to the 90-some people who responded, are your ethical and moral foundations likely to change in the future? I can think back and think of asking my grandfather that question, and I know what the answer was going to be. No, no, nothing was going to change. The foundational, concrete, hard outlook of what was right and wrong was never going to be chipped away in life. It is what it is, and there was no straying from that. But I know my own parents had a different moral and ethical foundation and stability that was born out of their experience of life that was different from their parents. I know those of my own generation, while our moral and ethical foundation would have been informed not only of the experience of growing up and learning from our own parents and the cohort of generational sensibilities and experience around us, that were born out of, yes, predominantly a Christian tradition, they were a little bit different than our parents. Millennials have a very different moral and ethical foundation of, of what it is that they believe and where they are going, different from their parents. The same with Gen Z. My own children challenge and question. And I know going forward, the foundation of who they are, what they believe, how they see and experience the world and interact from others is going to be different from that of my own experience. The giftedness of that is, is the opportunity for transformation. If you go back to that image of the hard, packed, concrete, almost like ice, once that initial stream formed, it began to chip away. It began to expand as more of the ice melted into water and flowed down the drain. And if we could have had that experience of toothpick racing for weeks on end, we would have been absolutely overjoyed. But it never lasted that long. After maybe a week, that hard packed foundation was completely transformed and gone. It only took a week. It only took less than a week for the foundational beliefs of those who followed Jesus to be completely upset and melted away. For their initial excitement and passion and commitment were tested to the point of complete and utter brokenness. But the one person who understood, the one individual whose foundational nature 
that embodied the very essence of God. God with us. Emmanuel understood the sacrificial need of doing what was necessary to create something new. If you think of it, sitting here today doesn't exist without that week in Jerusalem. It does not come into form or begin to layer upon a foundation of belief and of faithfulness and of Christian expression without the arrest of Jesus, without the trial of Jesus, without the walk carrying the cross towards the hill. It does not take effect and it does not happen. It does not exist without the death. and the sacrifice of the one person who was going to change everything. It doesn't happen without a resurrection on Easter morning. That built the solid foundation Upon we reside today. But that foundation is always changing. It is always morphing. It is always transitioning. It has over 2,000 years. It has in your lifetime experience of the church from what once was to what is today. It is stressed, it is fractured. It moves in directions that we do not anticipate. Chunks of that foundation are torn apart. Only to be filled in with something new. That is the great gift of this week. Because the foundational nature of who and what we are cannot be washed away and never replaced. It begins with that journey into Jerusalem. And it ends with an empty grave. Only to begin again. only to be challenged to go through endings and transition so that new life is born. That's what happens next. And that very presence of God, Christ, and Holy Spirit, which form the foundational roots of who we are, know that the next will be filled with blessing and grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, on this day of remembrance, on this day of celebration, this day where we enter the week that we call holy, we pray that a continuing and constant spirit of openness be present within our growing and transforming faith. For we welcome you into our lives and we invite you to inhabit our hearts 
and is, inspire everything that we do. And so grant us the courage, O oh God, to be followers more than just simply fans of Jesus. We realize it is infinitely easier to wave palms on a day of high emotion and popular support than it is to profess allegiance when the cross looms large and popularity wanes. And so give us a spiritual steadfastness that enables us to follow the course of a leader, a guide, our hope and our way wherever it may lead us. For we realize, God, that we sometimes behave more like a crowd of observers than a congregation of believers. We know that there are times our faith seems as external to us as a passing parade, and we function solely as the spectators. And so involve us in our beliefs, giving God, so that we might participate in a mutual ministry with Jesus and with one another, serving you with purpose, serving you with vision, with mission, and most importantly, passion. Divine Creator, help us during this week ahead. Help us to keep in our prayers, especially those for whom Jesus always displayed concern. For the socially and economically challenged, all of those feeling the intense anxiety of distress, the victims of injustice, the ill, those whom we neglect and reject in ways that we don't even see or understand. But that neglection and rejection is real and felt. Challenge us always to keep pace with our servant. Through triumph and trial. Praying always in Jesus' name who taught us to pray with these words as our divine creator who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This holy week, number 651 from Voices United, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 651.
week, let us keep our eyes upon Jesus Christ. For Christ will show us where we need to go. And in going the love of God, that presence of Christ and the ever and eternal Holy Spirit will empower us and comfort us and guide us. Go in peace this day. Amen.